Hello, welcome back to another gaming video. Today we're focusing on the MMO genre and taking a specific look at our top five MMOs currently in development. In the world of gaming, the MMO genre seems to stand out as a particularly difficult nut to crack. The combination of multiplayer, engaging character development, deep living worlds, and the availability of enough content to hold an audience for years means that very few games in recent years have survived contact with the player base to be considered a good MMO RPG. However, after a long period of failing projects, sunken kickstarters, and disappointing unfinished releases, there are a few games on the horizon that have both the vision and the talent behind them to bring a new generation of games that we as fans have been waiting for for so long. So let's kick off this list with our number 5. First on the list at number 5 comes Camelot Unchained. Developed as a Realm vs Realm MMORPG with hybrid action and tab targeting. The intention here is to be a sort of spiritual successor to Dark Age of Camelot, a game whose legacy in the PvP landscape is often touted as one of the top PvP games of all time, within a golden era of MMOs. Then it might also fill you with confidence to know that the lead developer for Camelot Unchained also worked on Dark Age of Camelot in its prime. They built their own game development environment called Unchained Engine, for the sole purpose of creating the capability for truly large-scale battles and draw distances. The team have the intention of a subscription payment model with the promise of not having any money-grabbing features past your sub. The game is set in a torn world caused by the Shattering of the Veil, the border between our world and magical world that brought forth the likes of dragons and emissaries, causing an apocalyptic event known as the First Breaking of the World. Players are split into three realms that will define the races and classes they can pick. With a choice of 19 races and 28 classes, it seems there'll be a lot of variety in options come release. I'm personally not too sure what to think about this game yet. I like all their initial intentions, but what we're seeing so far doesn't really match our expectations for a modern day MMO, or even shows promise of becoming one anytime soon. That being said, it still just barely makes this list as a game that so many have been following over the years. And with the legacy of its dev team, you never know it may just meet our expectations after all. At 4 we have New World, an upcoming MMORPG being developed by Amazon Game Studios and set to release as buy to play on PC at some point in Spring 2021, after experiencing multiple delays. This game is set in the 1600s, and you jump in as a traveller who's joined a voyage of other explorers looking to colonise and explore a newly discovered island in the Atlantic Ocean. A land full of secrets, strange magic, player-managed settlements, competing factions, and deadly enemies. One element of game design which sets New World apart from other MMO games like WoW or Guild Wars is its classless system. As a player, you won't choose a class. You create your build based on the playstyle you want, and this is done by deciding how you want to distribute your attribute points and which weapons and weapon skills you want to use. New World opened up to player testing during 2020 and was criticised for having repetitive cookie-cut missions, unbalanced weapon skills that made PvP very frustrating, limited endgame content, and a general lacklustre to experience. However, the guys over at Amazon Game Studios seem to be addressing players' concerns and making some significant changes to the gameplay. One thing that did come out of the player testing was the scope of what they're trying to build. Dedicated factions will control areas of the map and players will control settlements and fight to expand the borders of the chosen faction. In addition, the world itself seems like a great foundation in which to build an interesting game. It's just that when we jumped into the game to play back in 2020, it didn't feel like it had enough to keep people coming back long term, but only time will tell. But for us, it's still definitely one to keep our eye on this year. Crowfall is another one for fans of PvP, a buy-to-play title developed by Artcraft from a Kickstarter that surpassed expectations in 2015. This open-world fantasy PvP MMO is designed to scratch the itch that so many of us have had for a PvP experience, while still wanting an element of RPG progression attached. The game is fully action targeting, eliminating the tab targeting element found in a lot of older MMOs. Visuals are uniquely stylized with a cartoon aesthetic hosting a number of different worlds in the Crowfall universe. You play as one of 12 races including Centaur, Half Giants and Minotaurs, each race locked into a selection of the 11 playable classes, mostly ones you've heard of such as Assassin, Druid and Rangers, but they also have some interesting sounding ones like Frostweaver and Confessor. The story revolves around an unknown force called the Hunger that lives at the centre of the universe, corrupting all that it comes into contact with. The gods have no knowledge of what the Hunger is or where it came from and call forth all players as eternal champions to help defeat it. There was a closed beta that resulted in mixed reviews. A large amount were on the negative side with regards to the performance of the game when trying to play. It seems a fair amount of the interface has bugs too. 
However, this doesn't seem to be due to the lack of trying. If you go over to their YouTube channel, you'll see frequent update videos highlighting upcoming changes and discussions from a number of guys on the team. Their most recent update, 6400, brought in quite a number of changes, although it doesn't seem up to scratch just yet. The PvP niche they are going for is one there is certainly a gap for, so for those that aren't into the likes of a major PvE-oriented MMO like WoW, but don't just want a pure PvP experience like League or Dota, this will be one to check back on soon. Pantheon has been in development for some time now, and as a personal lover of D&D, Pantheon looks like the closest thing on the list to a true party exploration and cooperative RPG experience. In addition to this, it was also kicked off in the capable hands of EverQuest co-creator Brad McQuaid, until he sadly passed away in 2019, leaving the game in the capable hands of an impressively experienced team. Pantheon is often described as the next-gen EverQuest, which to be honest sounds like a good thing. It may not be appealing to everyone, but it's something that many old-school MMO lovers are excited to get their hands on, and will hopefully draw in an entire new generation of players that didn't experience EverQuest in its prime. Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is designed to have a heavy emphasis on the social elements of online role-playing games. Grouping up, for example, will be mandatory to complete a lot of the content in the game, like dungeons and raids. The game has been self-proclaimed for not holding any hands, and unprepared players may well find themselves having a hard time beating some of the higher content in the game. So you'll need to strategize with your team, know your role and play it well. The nature and the role of your character will be familiar, and fall under the tank, healer, DPS and support archetypes. However, there still are 9 races and 12 classes to choose from, so there'll be a lot of scope to customize the exact character you want to play. While Pantheon does include a lot of familiar aspects of game design, they are innovating the genre with things like a perception system, meaning that there won't be questline handholding, and you'll have to pay particularly close attention to your environment. So whether you enjoy playing a healer, a tank, or just trying to get out as much damage as possible, for us Pantheon is definitely one to watch for the more hardcore RPG fans out there. From Intrepid Studios comes Ashes of Creation, a game with a pretty ambitious scope and the aim of achieving a player-driven world with dungeons, raids, world PvP, arenas, the lot. And like pretty much every game on this list, a development time that is taking way too long for a genre that is drying up fast. However, I think this game has one of the best chances of invigorating the scene and defying the contempt we all now have for kickstarted, overly ambitious MMOs. Updates are frequent, engagement with the community is also in the form of long live streams showing genuinely newly developed features in an environment that is clearly playable. There are 9 playable races and 8 archetypes which, when a main and secondary are chosen, will define your class, much like the system in Arcage. For example, picking a rogue and warrior becomes a shadow blade, or summoner and cleric will become a necromancer. All this in a universe whose lore is a web of significant events that I struggled to put together in a short paragraph. However, it all stems from the story of creation, forming through the division of an ensuing battle of celestial beings known as the Ten, hence the name Ashes of Creation. The combat is hybrid action tab targeting, and although I believe the UI is still in a bit of a placeholder status, it gives off a fairly clean aesthetic. Many great features of past MMOs have clearly been cherry-picked into this one package, through the likes of running stalls and businesses, player-driven economy, personal housing and player-owned nodes, all pointing to an immersive world where players can be doing a vast range of different activities within the same game. With all these great aspects in mind, I think it's still important to consider where it's currently at. From the looks of things, movement and combat is still a way off in terms of an enjoyable, playable experience, which of course it doesn't necessarily have to be at this stage. But as these aspects are so core to any game, I do wonder why it wouldn't be a priority to get right before a lot of the other features have been added. The release date for Ashes of Creation has not been announced just yet, but we'll be sure to follow up in more detail with in-depth videos at an appropriate time. Overall for us, there seems to be a massive amount of potential coming up for MMOs, a genre that we as fans thinks needs a bit of love and attention to breathe new life into the genre and give us more to choose from than games like WoW, Final Fantasy or Guild Wars 2. For me personally, the old school EverQuest style gameplay, exploration and teamwork makes Pantheon my frontrunner for most anticipated MMOs. EverQuest had a huge fan base in its prime, and the need for effective teamwork, communication and strategy gripped players who enjoyed a more immersive and involved experience. And Pantheon Rise of the Fallen looks like it's setting itself up to be the game to recapture this audience. 
For Nex, Ashes of Creation is number one on the list, and the regular dev updates and gameplay live streams helps to build a confidence that the game is actually looking to be pretty good, and perhaps even the next big MMO to hit the market. Let us know in the comments if there's an MMO on the horizon that you have your eye on, or if you agree or not with the list we've put here. We're the Bullet Sponges, and we'll see you in the next one.